So today on LearnPaisley.org, we're going to be speaking about uh, drive of an ultrasonic transducer. And we have already sort of just started discussing this in the unfinished series of uh, the ultrasonic cleaner. Um, however, just for a more theoretical um, explanation on the general principles involved in driving an ultrasonic uh, transducer, uh, we are going to discuss it here and now. So essentially, the basic element of driving an ultrasonic transducer is going to be a voltage source which can provide different frequencies um, and you obviously you would then operate your transducer at that frequency which is resonant in order to get maximum displacement or you could say maximum velocity so we'll start off with uh, assuming we have a voltage source namely this one and the voltage source is a function is not a function of frequency except over time I mean the amplitude is it so the voltage source is a function of frequency in the sense that it is sinusoidal but the amplitude is not determined by frequency so it's going to be cosine or, or, or um, as well and when you apply uh, such a voltage signal over a crystal or a transducer so this is a symbol for a crystal either that or this if you have it altered uh, rotated so the displacement let's do that again um, the displacement frequency characteristic, so I'll assume this is frequency, and that's the resonant frequency, and let's just draw our dotted lines here, uh, just kind of giving myself a reference when I draw, I don't want to keep doing it over and over again. So at a very low frequency, we have a constant output, constant displacement, a sort of a flat um, response. And as we get to our resonant frequency, we have an increase in displacement. And after the resonant frequency, it starts to uh, drive downward. And at a high frequency uh, for a single degree of free, uh, freedom system, um, we have eventually have zero displacement. So we've gone over this a little bit before in different lectures, uh, parts of lectures. So. Um, this is the essential um, curve. Uh, now a couple of things now exist. So we're going to probably program this frequency in our function generator and our microprocessor to hit the resonant frequency of the crystal of the transducer um, that we are working with. It's a resonance frequency so we can get the most displacement from the least voltage and that's one of the reasons why we use ultrasonic frequency uh, or why we use resonance is to get a larger displacement uh, and, and again the other point of using resonance is because we want high frequency displacement either one, either one uh, whatever you're going for uh, you can achieve it using an, an ultrasonic uh, transducer so as we look at this so we have again that below significantly below the resonance points we have a flat response despite the frequency we have uh, one displacement uh, and as we get closer and the displacement is referring to let's say this is a uh, two crystals piezoelectric crystals and we have like let's say a metal piece on the end so the frequency at which this wants to vibrate its resonant frequency depending on the uh, mass and the modulus the mass and the modulus and the geometry how, how wide this is that will then uh, determine that resonance frequency and we drive it at that resonance frequency in order to get the maximum displacement 
at this. And when we're talking about displacement, we're talking about the ends of the transducer, not necessarily the crystals. Uh, so we would want to drive this uh, voltage in order to, and at the right frequency in order to get the maximum uh, displacement near the resonance point. But in that uh, re remains a point of, amb uh, of difficulty. Uh, so when we are, uh, in when we engage our uh, ultrasonic transducer with a load, our resonance frequency shifts, okay? And therefore, uh, the point in which we are, which we want to operate, you know, the, this is the operation frequency, if you would call it uh, omega subscript zero or O, uh, that is going to change. And if that changes, then now we're no longer operating at the optimum point. And that means our displacement that we're going to achieve will be variable. So it won't be the same because if you can take an example, you have one curve and let's say under load, the resonance frequency drops. So we have a shift from here to here. So we were operating, let's say at this frequency, but then we got under load because our load conditions can change. Um, they're not always consistent, so that would then drop down to here. So we immediately now we have much lower displacement than we did before. And again, this is the displacement frequency plot. Additionally, what happens is uh, when you get under load, not only does your frequency drop um, to an extent that would significantly change your response, Not only does your frequency drop such that it would change your response, but also the response itself changes. So we have that frequency, that response, but also the system is damped. So the optimum, the the uh, the highest displacement you'll see will be lower, obviously, when you're under low. So you get, again get even lower displacement uh, due to that region. And if you can imagine a system with a varying load. So the load is changing uh, depending on uh, the conditions that your ultrasonic transducer is driving, whether it could be a wire bonding transducer, which at different points in the welding process where you were essentially welding a wire to a substrate, um, and the ultrasonic transducer is, let's say, driving this area right here to heat it and melt it onto the, so so as that weld progresses you're going to get different frequency stiffness characteristics damping characteristics load characteristics so you'll have a variation of bouncing back between these different states um, and you will get a very variable output uh, if you're not driving at your proper frequency because as you can or, or at proper conditions so um, the question is um, uh, so, and also another thing to throw in there is as we drive the ultrasonic transducer, it heats up and heat also shifts frequencies. So it can also cause the same effect as load and, and as well, the resonance frequency also changes to an extent with, uh, amplitude, drive amplitude. So that is both, it changes both with regards to how much it's displacing and how much voltage you're putting in as well. So all of these, all of these effects create a variable um, response in the piezoelectric uh, device. And in, in all, all ultrasonic, even you could say resonant type devices, uh, this, these concepts hold true. So the question is, um, how do we maintain a consistent output of 
output, meaning, uh, let's say displacement is our consistent output. Um, in a, an environment, of varying load because it seems that whenever we change our uh, device we are now I mean whenever we're getting under load the the, uh, the load changes the characteristics of the of the uh, transducer and we are no longer operating at a significant uh, amplitude of vibration. So how are we going to uh, resolve this? Uh, that's the question. And yes, we do have, uh, you know, ultrasonic transducers, which are doing a great job. And the question is that how do they do that? Um, I will explain that now. As we mentioned in the past, uh, many of the past lectures, uh, we have uh, piezoelectric crystals or uh, and, and transducers are both uh, sensors and actuators. Um, so the same material you could say could be used for both. Uh, both uh, so that those piezoelectric properties, the piezoelectric crystals have both properties of sensors and actuators and you know what we could do for the ultrasonic transducer you know if we have that running let's say some type of you know these are the crystals and let's say this is aluminum and this is aluminum so we have some type of stack of crystal stack and you can look up ultrasonic cleaner to get a better uh, image of what this is. Uh, this is aluminum type of like cylindrical thing connected to the piezo, connected to the piezo, connected to an aluminum uh, back mass. And let's say we have a uh, a bolt going through all of this in the in the center. So we keep it all together. Um, and you can look up ultrasonic cleaner uh, if you want to just get a better image of what I'm talking about. Uh, so we. Um, we could, for example, have something monitoring the displacement here, have some type of sensor there. All right. And that would be a, a way to monitor how this part vibrates and then use that to drive your crystals. And this is not the way it's done, but I'm going to go through this example and then I'm going to go through the way we actually do that measurement. So we have a sensor volt value. So I'm just going to call it some type of like S equals um, S not sine omega T. And uh, we can just throw in a phase shift here. Um, and we have our driving voltage which we are driving, using to drive these piezos. Um, so let's call it piezo. And let's say our displacement at the tip is also that, um, it's also some factor, let's call that factor F, capital F. Uh, so we can say, you know, um, that DO, the displacement amplitude, is that factor F, the conversion between our sensor amplitude uh, and our uh, displacement. So you could use this, and you can use a closer control. It's a monitor. So basically, you would have a circuit or some type of PID controller, which would then uh, measure this value, right? And then it would it would change the voltage. So what we would end up doing is we would have that voltage, not only being a, 
a function of frequency, but it would be a function of SO. It would be a function of that sensor value. So in that case, so we would have some type of sensor value, which the sensor value is dependent on um, what the displacement is. And then we can times, um, so we, we would have that sensor value being input. So if you just do a diagram, we have voltage input creating a displacement. And, and from that displacement, we then get a sensor value. And that sensor value would then be used to adjust the voltage. So this, uh, this voltage, right? So now we would, we would vary voltage up and down in order to vary displacement. When displacement drops down due to that frequency shift, we, we, uh, the voltage would then compensate. So when the displacement drop, when the voltage drops down, for example, or let's do it this way. When the displacement drops due to a frequency shift, the sensor value also drops which then tells the voltage to pick up its pace. So this is the control signal. Therefore, the displacement ends up being hovering around our set point that we, de that we decided on. The other, the other fact, the other point, so the front one is amplitude, voltage amplitude control. So, right, I was, I was speaking about, before PowerPoint quit on me, voltage amplitude control. So we basically, yeah, we're monitoring the sensor value and we are adjusting voltage accordingly. So the other point of this is not clear now still. Um, you know, I mentioned here in this slide that the resonant frequency can change based on load or based on how hard you're driving, what amplitude you're driving the ultrasonic transistor and even what displacement it, it's achieving it, 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 as a consequence of load and drive amplitude. Uh, so the frequency also then affects you know, the relative frequency according to the maximum effect. So we will, even though, let's say the maximum frequency drops when you have a load, so it drops from here to here. Uh, it drops from this point down to this point. Um, we would still, and, but, but if you keep the same frequency, our set point now drops too. So it's, we're not actually, when we achieve the load, we're not actually achieving our maximum potential displacement. So for that we have to adjust frequency. So the signal that we use to adjust frequency is phase. This is how we know what frequency to use. So for uh, phase or frequency versus phase so as we are driving our transducer this is the displacement phase so i'm just going to write this as theta not all my notation is consistent but i explain it as i go so this is the displacement phase so this is zero degrees And this is 180 degrees. Right? Uh, and as we are driving our transducer, at the resonance point, we are at um, 90 degrees phase, approximately. These are all theoretical. They do change based on your system slightly, but these are theoretical numbers which are great for explanation and understanding and hold true for the most part. So basically 
there's a face characteristic around, I'm not going to explain why I've done another lecture, there's a face characteristic around the resonance frequency which tells us how far we are from it. So I mentioned when that resonance frequency shifts lower, let's say for argument's sake it shifts there, we'll get this curve shifting as well. So if you were, first of all, if you are operating here, originally, when that resonance frequency shifted over here, we would now be operating at this point. So our system, that sensor value, its delta would now be close to, let's say, 159 or something. So we could then tell our voltage frequency to lower and drop to match um, a phase of 90. So until we get to a phase of 90, this frequency should drop. So this is basically the block diagram for this. We input a frequency from voltage. We get a displacement which has a phase and then we uh, get a signal which hopefully correlates it also has a phase um, then we would use that to adjust the frequency and the criteria is does whatever criteria we choose we could not we don't have to operate at this resident point exactly and there's reasons not to do that um, but we would then um, start with uh, this, uh, the, uh, what am I trying to say? So then we would, we would figure out, this is a logic statement, does, you know, does phase equal 90 degrees? So if phase is more than, let's say 90, let's say 90 is our target, if phase is more than 90, decrease frequency. If phase is less than 90 degrees, then increase frequency. And this is the basic way it's controlled to maintain a certain frequency set point around the resonance frequency. So the effect of this is now, um, see that you know that hump was there for the for the uh, system under load, and the hump was here, and these this is both displacement. So as we got this shift. Uh, we are now actually accounting for that shift in fate in, in with re in, in, in resonant frequency. So we're getting the optimum frequency of drive. So there are two control aspects that I just described here. For the first aspect of this control is voltage control. And the second aspect is of, of this is, is a phase control. Sorry, oops, not phase control, frequency. And both of these now go into uh, measuring. Both of these now go into determining the displacement and that's how we achieve you know let's say let's draw a fun type of thing here let's say our this is all frequency uh, let's say our um, the resonance frequency so that frequency that's optimum let's say uh, over time it is on this, let's call this time, sorry, this is not frequency, this is time. Let's say over time it's varying, you know, and it goes, goes differently. Uh, we would also then see that phase, let's, let's assume only phase tracking. We would then see the phase, so if the resonance, resonance frequency increases, let's say this part's increasing um, until you get to this maximum point. So let me draw that actually finer, a little easier to understand. Uh, let's say our resonance frequency is increasing. So, what I, I ideally we'd want the same phase, right? And the only way we're going to get the same phase is 
if our frequency of voltage, the control frequency, also starts to increase to sort of follow this behavior. All right, so it starts to follow that behavior and therefore uh, the resonance frequency changes and there are many ways to control for it. The PID is one, but just a simple logic check like if the phase is higher than 90 or whatever your set point is, then you know subtract one hertz from the frequency until you get there. So it's kind of like a lot. It's kind of every time you check. If I'm if I'm higher, reduce by one. If I'm higher, reduce by one. Or you can do proportionally. If I'm higher by 20%, reduce by reduce decrease the phase by I mean the frequency by such amount. So there's different ways to use control different control methods and, and but the idea is the same when you are at a higher phase you reduce your frequency and when you are lower phase you increase it and this is all phase measured according to displacement but it's kind of cumbersome to measure displacement uh, in your application and um, we are going to get to a way next how we will uh, use the piezo themselves uh, to perform this measurement to measure displacement and it's kind of it's a very clever uh, way that it's done uh, but the piezos themselves can actually give an indication uh, what even though we're using it for drive we're also going to use it for sensing uh, as we'll describe next and we have the same issue uh, here uh, so here I talked about frequency control now I'll talk about voltage control uh, so for voltage, we control the voltage amplitude. Um, we control and we measure uh, displacement or that sensor value, whatever one it is. Let's assume it's going to be proportionally the same. So in order to maintain a constant displacement, despite varying, let's say, load condition. I'm just going to call it load. So let's say the load is varying. So if the load is increasing here, and again, let's draw it a little bit easier. If the load is increasing, we'll have to have the voltage increasing as well to compensate. And keep that displacement, that output power level to the, uh, to the transducer uh, end the same. So in this lecture, we spoke about voltage control. and frequency control. So frequency aims to get us at the right at, at the optimum point on the curve. So as our uh, you know as our displace this is as our displacement to frequency uh, characteristics change we want to locate the right frequency, the, the best optimum point to drive, and then the voltage then compensates further and allows us to read the right amplitude. Um, both of these together then drive our constant displacement. So displacement over time, a little bit crooked but you get the idea displacement over time this needs to be flat so in the next lecture what I'm going to go over is how do we achieve that how do we achieve this without an external sensor. It's cumbersome to have a um, an expensive sensor on every single one of your your devices uh, and, and there is a way to use the piezoelectric materials themselves, those crystals themselves where you can use for actuation to also provide a sensing capability and I will discuss this in the next part of this lecture. Alright, thanks for watching.